So gentlemen, let's begin with House Bill 5, the Safer Kentucky Act. The now the new policy will take effect as law in about one month. This bill was considered an omnibus, meaning it has multiple parts to it all bundled into one big bill. One law lawmaker explained it on the floor by breaking it down into four parts, addressing homelessness, serious violent crime, shopkeepers rights and carjackings. The bill increases penalties for several offenses and creates a three strikes law for violent offenders. Opponents debated the bill goes too far and takes the wrong approach by not addressing root causes of crime. If you commit three serious violent crimes, you're going to do some hard time. We're going to take these criminals off the street permanently. Statistics show us that this is a very small percentage of criminals, but they are wreaking havoc in our communities. The final passage of House Bill 5 will be a smear on the history of this Commonwealth. It will fill our already overfilled jails. It will bankrupt communities. History is our greatest teacher, and history has already shown us that we cannot incarcerate our way to safety. So our Kentucky Police Department is prepared to start implementing this new law. Representative Nemus, I want to let you start this discussion. Yeah, I think so. I, th I agree with a lot of what Senator Schickel said on the, on, the, on the video there. I would say that I don't think this will impact local law enforcement too much. Most of the changes are about sentencing. And so when people get caught and they get convicted, they will be serving more time. But I do want to know, this is a both-end approach. This is a get more harsh on violent crime, mostly. has some other things in it. But I also want to know that it's not the only, not the only thing we've done. Governor Bashir in his Commonwealth of, of, uh, State of the Commonwealth Address said that we have more treatment beds per capita than any state in the, in, the, in the whole country. That's something we're proud of. So this was a get tough on violent crime bill, but we've all also done a lot of funded a lot of treatment beds, more than any other state per capita. So um, I think it was a good bill. It was necessary to turn the, to turn the curve on, um, on treating violent crime more seriously. And you were both pretty invested on this, but Senator Neal, you had a pretty different uh, perspective on this. Well, you know, usually when I look at policy or I'm trying to organize people around policy, I deal with data-driven uh, solutions, and uh, I don't see where this is data-driven. In fact, when I was looking at what, well, let, me, let, me, let me give you a caveat on that. Maybe some aspect of it is because there's so many different things it's hard to figure out, but I don't think it's uh, generally data driven. And in fact, if you look at this bill, you'll find that, uh, in fact, I've asked those, uh, some of those who were involved in putting this together to provide me with that information. They were unable to do that, uh, or, let, or at least the information they provided, with, uh, provided me with was not data that drove the outcomes that are reflected in the bill. Well, as you mentioned, a lot of this has to do with sentencing, and we often heard a lot here of debate uh, throughout the session on this issue, which, I mean, there was a lot of debate on this particular bill. But there was. does the actual sentence length, does that affect criminals and, and their, uh, you know, thoughts towards committing crime? Well, I, I, think, I think the answer to that is yes, but more importantly, it gets, gets them out of the street, off, off of the street, right? So we're talking more, mostly about violent crime. And so... Our violent crim crime statute in Kentucky is very limited, one of the most limited in the country. And so if you commit a murder, an arson, a, a serious assault, if you're in jail, you're not committing the next crime. And so we want to make sure that you go to, go to jail for longer. If you, if you commit a third violent crime, then you go to jail for the rest of your life. I don't think that's too much to ask. Maybe that should be two, because the violent crimes are very, very seriously. How many women do you get to rape? How many houses do you get to burn down? If you do that a third time, you're, you're in jail for the rest of your life. And so you, the, the question is, will that reduce victims? You're darn right it will. They'll be in prison, not, not um, preying on our people. Senator Neal, is life sentence the right approach? Well, you know, it sounds good for someone who wants to project themselves as a get tough on crime individual, but everybody who is not a criminal wants to be tough on crime that affects them adversely. The question is, what is the effect of it? What's the outcome of it? Are we getting at the root causes of it? Is it something that we're going to repeat over and over again? Why do we use this approach as opposed to another approach? Is it designed to get the outcome that we're looking for? And again, I go back to the fact that this is not data driven. And if you look at this and you understand how crime manifests itself in various communities across Kentucky, across the United States, you'll find that this is not the data driven approach that you find uh, most that have used data have uh, pursued. Now, I don't disagree with much of what he said. I do think it's data driven. Um, I agree with him that, it, that you have to have not only this approach, 
if there were only this bill and nothing else, if this bill were in a vacuum, I wouldn't be for it, Gerald. But it's not that. It also has, because of what we've done in the budget for many years, but especially this year, we're funding drug treatment. We're funding um, uh, um, programs for to when when people get out of prison, they go back into the community. That's part of this bill as well. Not a part that's been discussed much, but that's part of this bill as well. So if it were or if it were only a harsh on crime bill, it wouldn't be for it. But it's much more than that. Lexington has only recorded six homicides this year. Uh, the landscape when it comes to, to crime, at least in our city, looks a lot different than it does in, in Louisville yep. uh, right now. Is it appropriate for there to be a, a blanket approach uh, to, to crime with this particular piece of legislation, or should it, enforcement look a little bit different in different communities? Well, the laws, I think, should be the same. You've got different prosecutors that we have. You have different needs that we have. In Jefferson County, our shootings are down 15% this year, but our homicides are up 7% this year. Our carjackings are through the roof, and that is from the high watermarks of COVID. You look about 10 years ago, we never had more than 85 murders 10 years ago. Now we're not quite double that, but we're getting close to double that. So the Louisville numbers are Louisville numbers are very high, and um, and and that's what we need to do. They're also high. In, you know, Pike County has an increase in in violent crime. So does Lexington. When you look over the 10-year marks, maybe lower this year than last year, but your your violent crime is increasing as well. We got about 10 seconds last week. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that those trends that we're talking that are spiking over time really reflects what's going on. We're not giving it the time to make good sound policy over time, and it's not happening in this situation in Kentucky right now with this bill. All right, we'll have to leave it there and see what it looks like whenever the bill becomes law here in about a month.